Hey, hello, listeners. This is Kat, and welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Podfix. This will be the continuation of Data Stream. This will be Part 18, Chapter 18. Hitoshi was worried. He had been trying to get a hold of Izu since Thursday, but he hadn't replied to a single message. That wasn't like him at all. Of course, with his uncle having been hurt, maybe he wasn't paying attention to his phone. And then there was that raid yesterday. He saw the prison mic was there, so Izu was probably distracted in watching that raid. He hadn't come to school yesterday, either. Do you think Izuku will be in class today? Shoto asked. I hope so, Hitoshi replied. I'm worried about him. Don't worry about me, Hito. I'm not going to be in most of our classes today, but I will be in English. Izu, Hitoshi breathed a sigh of relief. Where have you been? At home. I'll tell you about it at lunch. Maybe. If you eat with me in the teacher's lounge. Izuku? Shoto was just as concerned as Hitoshi was. It was a stressful couple days. Class is about to start. Put your phones away. Reluctantly, Hitoshi put his phone away. I guess we'll just have to talk to Izu at lunch, he said to Shoto. The two boys settled back into their desk just in time for the door to open. They were expecting Midnight to walk in like she had the day before, but were surprised to find Aizawa-sensei at the door covered in bandages. Aizawa-sensei! Half the class was shouting at their teacher, wondering if he should really be walking around, let alone teaching the class. The other half were wondering where Izuku was. After all, his uncle was back in class, so where was he? Settle down, you brats, Aizawa grumbled. As you can see, I'm fine. He ignored nearly half the class, exclaiming various versions of no, you're not, and continued. As for Izuku, he's become attached to present Mike. Well, Hitoshi thought, that explains where he is. Izashi walked into his homeroom class with his adorable tiny green baby following right behind him. Zuzu, you can take a seat at the desk again, he suggested. As Izuku took the seat he had taken on Thursday, Izashi's class erupted into chaos. That's him! Oh, I'm glad he's okay. He was really out of it the other day. I thought there was something wrong with him. Sensei! Izashi laughed and raised his hands, placating the students. Okay, guys, I can see you want a little explanation on this guy. Zuzu, want to introduce yourself? Sure. Izuku stood up and greeted the class. My name is Aizawa Izuku. Aizawa Shoto, the homeroom teacher of 1A, is my uncle. My quirk is weird, and I don't like talking about it all that much, but it's a mental one, and I can sometimes check out of my surroundings, like what happened on Thursday. Izuku scratched his head. Let's see, what else? Oh, I'm not an official student at UA, so while I might float around between various classes, I'm not on the roster for any of them. I'm the personal student of Nezu-sensei, and it's easier for him to teach me here. Izuku smiled his biggest smile as he sat back down. If Mike-sensei is willing, I'll answer a few questions. Since he offered, I'll allow it, but there are conditions, Izashi was quick to say. One, no asking about his uncle's home life. Pros deserve privacy, too. Two, no asking about his quirk. He already said he doesn't like talking about it. Three, if I think he's not comfortable answering a question, I'm going to shut it down. Understood? Yes, sensei, the class said. Izuku grinned at the class. Okay, I actually know everyone's name, so just raise your hand and I'll call on you. Yes, Isogai. Hi, um, what exactly happened to you on Thursday? We were worried about you. You were just thrown into the class and then you were unresponsive. Uh, that actually falls into the quirk category, sorry, Izuku shrugged. The alarm triggered my quirk, and I checked out. It happens. That's kind of why my uncle threw me here, actually. He wants to make sure someone he trusts is there to watch over me if I check out like that. Next, Okuda. Thanks. You said you're Nezu-sensei's personal student. What kind of things do you learn from him? I'm assuming it's not the normal curriculum. You're right. I'm not training to be a hero in the traditional way. I don't want to be a hero like Mike-sensei is, but I'm going to be a hero like Nezu-sensei. Part of what my quirk does is enhance my intelligence, so Nezu-sensei has been teaching me strategy, psychology, coding, and hacking, manipulation, and various university-level classes. Izuku looked at the next person. Akabane. Will this be a regular thing? Hanging out in our class? I doubt it, Izuku answered. Prison Mike was in a situation yesterday, and he's one of my favorite heroes. Since my uncle and him are so close, I kind of know what happened yesterday, and it was really scary, so I'm being a bit clingy today, and... He's lucky I'm not forcing him to wear me like a backpack. Izashi chuckled at that. Okay, that's enough questions for now. Let's get class started. A knock on the door to the teacher's lounge, and Hitoshi and Shoto entered. Izuku, your friends are here. 
Snipe said as he closed the door behind the two newcomers. Hey, guys, Izuku beamed and ran over to hug them. I missed you. Come over and have lunch with us. He dragged the two over to where he had been eating with his papa and uncle. Looking forward to the sports fest, Isashi asked the boys. Uh, yes, Hitoshi said a bit uncertainly. I mean, I don't think I'm going to really do my best out there. I don't want the attention. Uncle nodded at that. Yeah, since you're aiming for the underground, the less attention the better. The second event is always a team thing, Izuku offered. If you make it to the second event and then throw the match, you'll be bringing down your team, but I'd be super disappointed if you threw the event in the first round. At least try to make it to the final event. Izuku was giving his version of the cute puppy eyes that Hitoshi was weak against. We'll see, Hitoshi muttered. If you don't try your best, Shoto started. That kid from 1B will be insufferable. He's already annoying as it is. What happened? Izuku asked. He hadn't heard anything that would make them any worse than others. As we were leaving the class for lunch, there was a crowd of Gen Ed and 1B students trying to take a peek at the kids who survived a villain attack. They declared war on us. Hitoshi rolled his eyes. Ugh, that sounds like a pain. I don't think I've ever been happier to not be a hero student. Izuku suddenly stood up and raised his voice a bit. No one opened that door! Everyone in the room shared a glance with each other, wondering what was going on. When the door to the teacher's lounge rattled, the person on the other side attempting to open it. After a few more attempts, there came a knock. Problem creep, Uncle muttered. Did you lock All Might out of the lounge? I don't know, Izuku countered. Did he ignore orders, almost getting multiple heroes killed? Hitoshi and Shoto exchanged curious looks at that while Uncle just sighed. At least activate the security bots to chase him away from the door. I don't want to hear him knocking all throughout lunch. A voice was heard over the speakers in the hallway. All Might, don't destroy school property. Nezu giggled as the speaker cut out. Muffled by the door, everyone in the lounge could hear All Might mutter. What does he mean by destroy school property? I'm not knocking that hard. Oh, shit. He was then heard running away, while Metallic Whirring raced past the door. Izuku giggled, madly, as Hitoshi ruffled his hair. You really sent the security bots on him. Izuku's giggle subsided, and he pouted. He almost got my papa hurt, and Fatgum and Gang Orca were sent to the hospital, along with 127 civilians who hadn't evacuated their apartments before the buildings came down, which wouldn't have happened if all might have just followed the plan. I mean, how hard is it to... Zuzu, they're not clear to hear the details from that raid, Papa reminded. Izuku stuck out his tongue and pouted. Safe for you to hear, version. All Might's a bitch, and I want to ruin his career. I wish he had similar dirt to Endeavor. It'd make ruining him easy. Shota looked at Izuku with wide eyes. I thought you liked him. Eh, not really, but I respected him. I didn't hate him, Izuku shrugged. It's hard to know the things I do and actually like some heroes. Don't get me wrong, most are actually good, and I trust them. But then there are ones I hate. He shrugged again and went back to his lunch. On a lighter note. Shoto said after a few minutes. I'm looking forward to the sports fest. Yumi said mom will be allowed to watch, so I plan on doing my best. Shoto had a sweet smile on his face. He usually did when talking about his mom. Hitoshi nudged him. All the more reason for me to not get into the third round, then. Don't want to show you up in front of your mom. Shoto scoffed at him, while Izuku giggled. Izuku was in Nezu's office, uncle and papa were in the teacher's lounge, uncle taking a nap and papa grading papers while they waited for Izuku's lesson with Nezu to finish. Izuku, I have been thinking. Would you like to co-host the sports fest this year with Yamada and Aizawa? You don't have to be in the announcer's booth. I'm sure you could co-host it from home if you wanted, Nezu asked. Oh, that sounds like fun, and I promise not to let any of 1A know about the tasks, Izuku smiled. Before Nezu could reply, they heard a loud knocking on Nezu's door. That's odd. The camera isn't... showing... Izuku... Who is at my door? Hmm. Who indeed? Izuku hummed in quiet, sadistic satisfaction. The security in your hallway will be activated in about ten seconds, so heads up. I'll let Power Loader know I'll need it recalibrated later, Nezu sighed. I suppose I should be glad you haven't found a song you like for him yet. Oh, I already have that program mastered. I don't need to test it anymore. Besides, I want to ruin his career, not kill him. And if I did that to him, He'd be in danger due to his small might form. Izuku sported a grin he learned from Uncle Shoda. No, I'm thinking of other things. More petty things. 
I actually had a long list of things I wanted to do to Endeavor, but then I found out he was a truly shit person. I barely made a dent in that list. Now, while I wait for you to come up with something to really punish Yagi, I can use some of those ideas. Oh? Do tell. Hmm. He's going to find out about two of them once he finally goes home. Toshinori had been having a really bad day. First, all of his fellow teachers had been giving him the cold shoulder. None of them would talk to him. It's not like anyone had actually been hurt in the raid the previous day. Okay, so he went a little earlier than he should have, but can you really blame him? All for one was right there. He had to be dealt with swiftly, and some kid can't really be trusted to come up with such a plan to take down a villain like that. Toshinori was then further inconvenienced when the security system started to go after him. First when he tried to go to the teacher's lounge for lunch, and then again when he tried to speak with Nezu at the end of the day. Young Aizawa needed to be reprimanded, but no one was willing to do such, just because he was Eraser's nephew. Well, Toshinori was not afraid of disciplining the child. The next time he sent security bots after him, the boy would be sorry. He would make sure the boy would run laps or something, a detention. What do kids do in detention anyways? He had stopped at his mailbox before heading up to his apartment, and he saw he had a few packages. Odd. He didn't remember ordering anything. Shrugging, since they were most likely from his agency or another hero, he didn't think much of it. Toshinori had unlocked his apartment door and took off his shoes and set down the larger of the two packages and opened the smaller. A small poof exploded as soon as the lid was lifted, and glitter was sent everywhere, in all sorts of sizes and colors. Toshinori was not amused. This was going to take forever to clean. And with it being glitter, he knew he'd never be able to clean it all up. Looking suspiciously at the second package, he decided not to open it. It'd probably be just as bad as the glitter. Unfortunately, the second package didn't give him a choice. It appeared to be a bomb of some kind. Only when it exploded, it rained cow manure all over Toshinori's living room. Shota was trying to catch a few extra minutes of sleep before homeroom started when Vlad walked up to him looking a little unsure of himself, which was more than a little odd. Aizawa. Sekijiro. Vlad let out an irritated sigh of defeat. Okay, you were right. I should not have fought you in this. Shota smirked. He wasn't sure what he was right about yet, but he loved it when he was able to get Vlad to admit he was wrong. Go on. I'm right on so many things, you're going to have to be a little more specific. Screw you, Aizawa, he snarled, but then caught himself and said, I mean, the two students, the one you said should have been in my class, and the one you said should have been in yours. Yes, Mineta was already expelled from the hero course on that first day. You had your chance to make him a hero, but now that chance has passed. From what I read, I don't want him. There are a lot of girls in my class anyways, and he would not have lasted long there at all. But I'm here to discuss the other, Mona Monedo. Vlad paused and then sighed again. He needs a fighting style I can't teach in order to make his quirk truly effective. He needs a quirkless fighting style, like the one you're specialized in. Well, it just so happens that I have an open seat in my class. Shota was internally cheering. He had almost wanted to fight Vlad before the year started for that student. His quirk was complicated and needed a fighting style that Vlad would never be able to provide to the boy but he decided to accept the perverted child instead. He had seen the way the kid leered at the girls in the exam footage and knew that if he had passed, he'd be a sexual harassment case in the making, and would need a quick expulsion. After looking into his scores and seeing that he hadn't even made the bare minimum points required for enrollment, he realized that the boy was the child of one of the chairmen on the school board. Vlad wouldn't have the guts to expel a board member's kid, so he let Vlad take the Monoma kid as he took the Mineta kid. I'll let Monoma know he will be transferred into 1A. Vlad turned and walked out. Oh, Sekijiro, Shota called out to him before he got too far. Tell him that he should prepare for a hell training course. My nephew will be planning out his training regimen, effective today. Plus ultra, and all that stuff. All right, listeners, this concludes Chapter 18 of Data Stream. Chapter 19 will be up next. I love fics that include Monoma like this, so I'm really excited for the next chapter. Let me know your thoughts and reactions to everything so far, and as always, thank you so much for listening.